G'day folks, Andy here from McDowell Manor. G'day. What I wanted to do today is talk to you about a thing called microponics. And what got me thinking about microponics is in fact this document that I did right here. Um, I'll probably bung a copy up on the video for you of the document. It's not a particularly great example of a document like this, but it did help me clarify my thinking. And it's all about seeing your yard as a micro environmental system, uh, complete in itself. Um, so let's have a talk, a bit more of a talk about what the hell is he on about. So we've all seen Andy's aquaponics system. Now we all know, where the hell are the fish? Oh, there they go. We all know that that's the pairing of raising fish and using the outputs from the fish to power the vegetables, which clean the water and drop it straight back down into the tank. And so you've got a round closed system. Now in the late 80s, I think it was, a chap named Gary Donaldson, who happens to be an Aussie, um, started thinking about the limitations of aquaponics. And from now on, I'm actually going to deviate away from poor old Gary and explain to you things how I see them. Um, so this is only my take on microponics. Feel free to grab everyone else's takes. Um, but anyway, what? aquaponics alone misses out is everything you can see on the other side of that screen there which is probably nine tenths of my damn yard started to say well we need a lot more biodiversity we need other micro livestock for example we've got quail we have chickens we have worms although you probably can't see too many down there at the moment let me move that and you can see there's bloody millions under there so we've got a lot of worms, they're compost, even though you can't see them at the moment. We have all sorts of micro life, insects and black soldier fly and stuff in the compost bins. So remember that we have the worm towers where I put a lot of scraps in from out the kitchen. Uh, it's got a lot of holes in the bottom so that encourages earthworms to come and eat all that, that good gear. One of the most useful uh, micro livestocks that I have is one most of us hardly ever think about and it's microbes. In that compost bin hopefully is growing millions and millions of microbes and those microbes are what goes into the, sorry about that, uh, into the soil mix which is what makes your soil really lush and rich it enables the plants to take up the nutrients that are in the soil a lot better. Um, and that's the turning point. Once you can get your soil running really well with all those microbes, um, you will have bountiful crops. And they will be extremely high in nutrient when you eat them and extraordinarily good for you. Uh, that is the most important micro critter that I've got here on the farm I think is my microbes. We've also got the little Australian native bees as another micro livestock. Um, they take no inputs to be honest. Um, the only output I can see they'll ever give us and I'm not even sure I'll bother stealing it from the poor little buggers is honey which is great. It's beautiful honey, Australian native bee honey. Um, what they most, their role mostly is to uh, pollinate all my food crops. So let me give you an example of how that biodiversity helps. Um, so, for example, the quail poo, which collects underneath the quail cage, is gathered up and that goes in the compost. Uh, of course, I eat the quail eggs, and to be honest, I'll probably eat the male quails, but we'll wait and see how that goes. Um, all of that good nutrient-rich output, and same for the chickens, goes into one of the compost bins or another, um, and that helps add nutrient a nutrient base to the nitrogen particularly to the compost and the compost my friends is then used to refresh garden beds harvested grass 
because I don't cut my, I don't mow my lawn over here, folks. I harvest my grass. That all goes straight into the compost, um, and so it's it's going fantastic. Things will come up in the compost uh, of their own accord, uh, and that's because it scraps out of the out of the kitchen. So that's duckweed and water fern, which I have a sneaking suspicion is all called also called a zola. Um, that all will go goes in as fish food to try and limit the amount of input in there. Some of the compost worms are going to be started starting used as fish food as well because I'm confident now they've built the numbers up to sufficient level to allow me to do that. And so you, you can see what the attempt here is to get a consistent set of feedback loops. So the outputs of one thing become the inputs of another. Um, all of which at some stage of the game hopefully pass through me in the form of I eat them. So the beauty of this kind of microponics uh, diverse system is there's my compost bins and there's my coffee grinds. I keep all them. Both lots of that stuff go straight into the compost as well. <clears throat> We're now producing half the garbage that we used to produce. Absolutely amazing. Uh, there's no easy way of doing this folks. This is my rainwater tanks. So not only are we attempting to minimize the stack one on the other, which allows me to gravity feed the top tank down into the bottom tank. And that's the one that runs through a little irrigation system into my entire garden, which is wonderful. Um, so not only are we putting out a lot less output than we used to do, but we're also cutting our inputs from outside, which is another wonderful, wonderful thing. We pay for water over here, and I believe everybody should, quite frankly. It's not a limitless resource. Um, but we've cut our, certainly cut our water use by heaps um, using the rainwater on the gardens. That, um, so the red is output, and the green in the document is input. That also helped me clarify my thinking you can see everything going round and round and round in the yard. That's microponics in action. Um, but it helped me clear in my thinking where I've still got ins and outs coming from outside. Um, that helps me prioritise those. And in fact, my biggest at the moment is electricity. And we're currently saving to get a five and a half kilowatt um, solar system stuck on the roof. That should help us cut that input a bit. Uh, what's below that is, is food. Um, that's cut a lot. It's not completely eliminated, obviously, but we've cut a lot from eating what comes out the yard. Uh, most of our garbage is used in the compost. What's not, uh, we have recycle bins as well as normal bins. Uh, still using toilet systems and still getting some water from the tap. Uh, from town water, uh, I don't, in a yard my size, you know, a lot of that's not avoidable. Um, I could try and use a compost system, but it's probably illegal in our city, to be honest, to do that within the suburbs. Um, but, yeah, so it does help you think about things. It does help you identify what's going where and what's doing what. Um, so hopefully that's been a little bit sort of helpful and educational about microponics. It's not a word I use, I hear used very often. Um, it's one I know most YouTube farmers, we all get it. Uh, but I don't think a lot of people are kind of thinking about it formally enough to actually put it all together. So maybe if nothing else, I might have started a few conversations, hey? All right, folks, well, hopefully that's been a bit enjoyable and you have a great day and enjoy whatever the heck you're doing.